Very good morning to all our online viewers and listeners. We want to say thank you this morning for connecting with us here at Impact Family Church, East London, South Africa. This is our morning service, and we are so blessed to know that you have made the time to connect with us this morning, and we truly hope that you will be richly blessed in God's presence and with God's Word. Let's pray together. Father, we want to thank you this morning that you are the God of the miraculous. You are still our way maker. You are still our promise keeper. You are still able to step into that which looks so complicated, looks so confusing, and you're able to make a way through it. And so this morning, Father, I pray for all of us that are in this building and for everyone either at home or somewhere listening to this message right now that they will be reassured in your presence that there is a way forward, there is a way out, and we can get through to the other side. And so, Father, we commit this time to you in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, family, we've been dealing with a series entitled Transition. And at some stage or another, we are going to have to encounter transition in our lives. My question that I have for you this morning, that as you and I encounter transition, when we are moving from A to B in our lives, what is on your to-do list? How are you planning to go about your transition? Because so often we can go about it in an incorrect way, because on our to-do list we've got everything else in place, but we don't have in place that which is going to help us to transition well. And so this morning, I want to remind you, what is transition? It's a period of change in someone's life. Are you going through change? Do you feel like change is around the corner? Well, this morning, I believe God wants to give us some transition tips. And I'm hoping that we can have a light bulb moment this morning. That even as you're sitting in a dark space, or maybe you're sitting in a complicated space, uh, in a place that makes no sense, that this morning God's going to put the light switch on for you. And you're going to have a light bulb moment, and you're going to say, wow, now I have the tools to transition well in my season of change. Because even in the presence of change, there is the temptations, there are the pitfalls, and the slippery places that we have to tread very carefully. And so I want to encourage you this morning and warn you of the transition traps along the way that is geared to trip us up. And before we know it, we can slip and we can fall, and then we get disillusioned and discouraged. So I pray that this morning you're going to be equipped with God's Word to identify the tips and the traps so that we can transition well. And so this morning I want to say this to you. Everything matters. Turn to someone say, and say to them quickly, everything matters. You know, I, I look back on life, and I can really say this. I've learned one lesson in life. Everything mattered in my past. Everything mattered. There were things that I thought it didn't matter. Why do I have to focus on it? Why do I have to give it attention? And only later on to realize, my word, if only I did give it attention. It did matter. But for some reason, I woke up with an attitude that said, nothing matters when really in life, Everything matters. So I want you to wake up every day and to every sunrise and say to the sunrise, today, everything matters. Because I'm telling you, by the time the sun sets, you will say, oh my word, everything did matter and I lost the opportunities because for some reason I had an attitude that said, nothing matters when in life, everything matters. And so because everything matters in life, time is precious. Let's not waste the time. Let's not waste the energy. In this week, a, a very good friend of mine, living out on an island, woke up in the morning, woke up to do his normal routine. He's only, he, was, he was 52, 53 years of age. Got up, went about his morning routine, and fell down in his house dead. Out of the blue. No one was expecting it. The tragic news that suddenly appears. Life is short. Life is unpredictable. Use it wisely. Live in it and wisely. We need to learn how to transition effectively. What's in your plate this morning? What do you have to chew on? What do you have to eat through? What are you trying to process? I, wanna, I want you to know that whatever's in your plate, it matters. Everything matters. You know, Valma and I, we, we love watching the Master Chef series. And um, one thing I've learned about the Master Chef series, every plate that comes out the kitchen matters. 
every plate. Don't, don't shortchange anything. I want every plate to look identical. For every customer matters. Everything matters. I believe that in a, in, a, in a corporate setting or in the secular world, when you're dealing with clients and when you're dealing with customers, no matter how bad their attitude can be, they still matter and they should still matter because they become your marketers. Treat them badly and you've got a bad marketer that you've just empowered to hit the grapevine and to share about your bad service. But when you encounter an individual, no matter how tired you are, no matter how frustrated you are, but you say to yourself, my job matters because my job matters. I've also got to ensure that everybody that comes into contact with me matters in my life. Everything matters. And so this morning, we need heaven's perspective. You need heaven's perspective. Because too often we're looking at everything from an earthly point of view. And that's why we're making complicated decisions. We're making decisions that make things worse because our perspective is earthly and not heavenly. And I'm really hoping that we can get a heavenly perspective. And if, if heaven would speak to us this morning, if, if the curtains of heaven could just open up for a moment and we could just hear the voice coming from the throne room of God, I believe he would shout to us this morning, excuse me, everything matters. The way you speak to your husband matters. The way you speak to your wife matters. But I was just joking. No, you already said it. It matters. Everything we do matters. How we worship God matters. How we go about life matters. The financial decisions we make matters. Every cent that we manage matters. Everything. If you can't manage five rand correctly, you will never manage 500 rand correctly. So the five rand matters. Everything we do in life matters. So here's the question. Does everything matter? And I'm praying that you're going to be able to answer that question today. Or are we drawing this conclusion every day? Ah, nothing matters. And we base it on a disappointment. We base it on a past experience where maybe we failed in, in the moment. And, and we just kind of draw this conclusion. Nothing I say or do matters. How many of us have ever said that? That we say, you know, no, no matter what I say, it doesn't really matter. My kids don't listen. No matter what I say, my husband's stubborn. No matter what I do, my wife still stays the same. Nothing matters. And that's the, the trap that we fall into. Because if that's our approach, that nothing matters, we are never going to transition well in life. Amen? Everything matters. I've always said this, every expression leaves an impression. And so often when Valme and I are sitting somewhere in the public, we get very involved in the conversation. And we're very passionate. And me, my eyes come out. And, and then her eyes come out. And we're kind of, and then we have to say, whoa, 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 smile. Smile. Just in case the, the crowd or the public thinks we're at each other's throat, but we're not at each other's throat. Just before someone draws the wrong conclusion based on an interpretation of our impression that they're receiving, every expression matters. Turn to someone and say, you're a newspaper in someone's hands. And even when you don't want it, they're turning your pages. They're watching you. They're listening to you. So I need you to know that everything matters. Parents, children are not just wanting to hear what they need to do. They want to see it in you. So everything you do before them matters. Everything matters. So answering this question correctly and drawing the right conclusion will help us to transition successfully. I pray that from today we will never use that statement ever again. Nothing matters. But by the end of today, we will all acknowledge that everything matters. So why do I say that? I'm building upon a principle. Turn with me to Galatians chapter 6, verse 7 to 8. Because I really believe that as a church, we are in the position of transitioning at the moment. 
Our lives are going through transition. I'm sure every single one of you is going through transition. And so I need you to know that everyone around you and everything you're encountering, everything that you're doing, everything matters. Why? Galatians chapter 6 verse 7 says, Do not be deceived. God cannot be mocked. A man reaps. A man reaps what he sows. Oh God, look what I'm reaping. It's the devil throwing the harvest at me. You know, you attract your own harvest by the decisions you've made in life. Sometimes we reap consequences 10 years later in a space where everything should be well in our lives and we think, what did we do wrong? Well, 10 years ago, you planted bad seed when you were transitioning and you had a bad attitude that said nothing matters and so you were careless you neglected your wife, you neglected your kids, you made careless decisions. Don't think that a bad decision gets wiped away overnight. It has to grow to bear the fruit of consequence for a man reaps what he sows. So you're going to have to live out the harvest, however uncomfortable or blessed the harvest is, a man reaps what he sows. So turn to someone and say, the ball is in your court. So stop blaming me. Stop blaming the devil. Stop blaming God. I am where I am because of the decisions I have made. Own it. Own your life today. Own your financial crisis today. Own your health condition today. Own your marriage today. Own it. However uncomfortable, that's the only way you're going to get through it is when you own it because now you can transition successfully. But when you're not owning it, you're going to keep going around the mountain until we learn how to own it because everything matters. Or I have made foolish decisions. I have made careless decisions. I look back and say, oh my God, I wouldn't change the journey, but I would change my attitude in the journey. It says in Galatians chapter 6 and verse 8, whoever sows to please their flesh, which is their sinful nature, from the flesh will reap destruction. And whoever sows to please the Spirit of God, from the Spirit will reap eternal life. I've come to understand that when I'm transitioning from one place to the next, there's two voices going on in my life. It's my flesh and my sinful nature that says, hit him. Don't look at me so holy. And the Spirit of God says, forgive him. And then the flesh says, hit him first. And then forgive him. And the Spirit of God says, no, forgive him first. Don't hit him. <laughs> and so there is this tug of war in us. And so we've really got to come down to the bottom line. Are we giving ear to our fleshly desires? Or are we giving ears to heaven's perspective and saying, let's go about this God's way? Matthew 25 and verse 20, but now before we pick it up in verse 20, here's a parable that Jesus unpacks, and he says that a man hands out talents of money, and a talent is a quantity of money, and in some terms they see it as a bag of gold. It's not just like one rand, it's, a, it's an amount of money. So he calls up three servants. To the one he gives five talents of money, to another two talents, and to one he gives one talent of money with an instruction. What I've given you, it matters. And how you manage it, it matters. I need you to take what I've given you and put it to work. Because again, heaven's perspective is everything matters. So they went out and the, and the one that had five went and put it to work and gained five more. The other took the two, put it to work and gained two more. But the one that received the one talent went and buried his talent. For some reason, he believed that his one talent, talent meant nothing. For some reason, his mentality from an earthly perspective looked at the little and said, this little is nothing to me. It does not matter to me. Somewhere in the Bible, we get to understand the beautiful principle that we must not despise the day of small beginnings. We must never despise the little because Jesus is able to take five loaves and two fish and feed a multitude of people. For, for some reason, from an earthly perspective, little is not good enough. For some reason, we draw a conclusion over little, little, nothing matters. When God's economy and from heaven's perspective, the little, everything matters. So the man who had received the five talents in verse 20 from Matthew 25 brought the other five and he said, Master, 
you entrusted me with five talents. See, I have gained five more. How did he gain it? Because in his mind, he looked at his master's money. Firstly, this is not my money. This is my master's money. We're going to get to understand this morning that as Christians, everything about your life is not about you. It's about your Father in heaven. So everything about your life matters. So he takes this and he says, you entrusted it to me. And to me, this matters, and I went and put it to work. I've gained five more. So the master replied, well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful with a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Come and share your master's happiness. Do you see transition there? I gave you the responsibility of looking after a little bit of money. That's all I did. I gave you a little bit of money. It's called a few things. But you looked at the few things and you said, this matters. The way I greet my wife in the morning matters. That before I leave my house and go to work, I will make sure I'm at peace with my wife because I may not see her tonight. I may not come home alive tonight. Before I go to bed at night, I'm not going to sleep with the devil next to me. I'm going to make sure I'm at peace with my wife because the Bible says, let not the sun go down upon your anger and I'm not prepared to sleep until there is peace. Mm. Oh, it doesn't matter. We'll talk about it next day. doesn't matter. We'll fix our problems in a week's time. And for a week, you're attached to the devil's attitude. Come on now, church. Everything matters. And I will put you in charge of many things. <laughs> See the transition. I will transition you into something better because you have learned that everything matters. You know, people that walk with true, authentic, and attractive, and life-changing authority is people who's learned to appreciate the little, and respect the little, manage the little, and never despise the little. Those are people that will carry a level of authority that no degree and no diploma can give you. Because they have learned in life that everything matters. Everybody matters. Every moment matters. Every decision matters. Every attitude matters. Because if I sow a bad attitude, I'm going to reap destruction. Because a bad attitude is not of the Holy Spirit. The bad attitude is of a sinful nature. God help us. Come on now. Verse 24. Then the man who had received the one talent, he came and he said, Master, I knew that you are a hard man, harvesting where you have not sown and gathering where you have not scattered seed. So I was afraid and went out and hid your talent in the ground. See, here is what belongs to you. I haven't lost it. I just buried it. I still have a marriage, but you've buried your relationship. I still have children, but you've buried your relationship with your kids. You can still be called a father and a mother, but you've lost the intimacy of being a dad and a mom because you have buried the relationship. You can still be called a Christian, but you're not at church. You're not reading the Word. You're not tithing. You're not worshiping. You're not practicing your Christianity. You may in word say, I am a Christian, but indeed you have buried your faith of being a Christian. Because it doesn't matter. I was just sleeping today, and you know what? I'll, I'll just make it next Sunday. What if there's no next Sunday? Is that how you're going to end your time on this world? Under the covers of your duvet on a Sunday morning when you can be in the presence of an almighty God, fellowshipping with the believers, and giving God the glory that he deserves? Come on, church. If I'm going to go out, I'm going to go out in a blaze of glory, giving God all the glory so when I step into heaven's glory, it doesn't shock me. Come on, church, we've got to get this right. So his ma master replied, you wicked and you lazy servant. Oh, my word. What's the definition of a wicked and lazy servant? Someone who's developed an attitude that says nothing matters. Going to church doesn't matter. Reading the Bible doesn't matter. Walking in forgiveness doesn't matter. In my book, it's an eye for an eye and a tooth for the tooth. Call me sore.
It matters how you talk to the petrol attendant. It matters how you deal with the local spa attendant who's taking your money and swapping your goods. Even though the prices are so high, why do you fight with her? It's not her problem. She didn't price it that way. Mm, but you you sow a bad attitude. Then why am I reaping such bad attitude from my children? Because you sow it to the petrol attendant, you're going to reap it from your kids. One way or another, you and I will reap what we sow. So we better get it right that everything matters now before we suffer the consequences of our foolishness. This is not attractive preaching, but it's (laughs) life-changing. So the master says to this individual, well then, you should have put my money on deposit with the bankers so that when I return... I would have received it back with interest. You must understand that as a master, I want to see growth. I want to see progress. It matters. My money matters. And if you had an attitude that understood that my money matters, you would have accepted it that it matters. Can I tell you that your tithe is not your money? Your tithe is his. So let me tell you, your tithe matters. We're living at a time where people are saying, I need, a, I need the antibiotics for my physical health. Let me tell you about the antibiotics to your financial crisis. It starts with your tithe. And you're like, oh, pastor, you're getting uncomfortable. And this is not like, well, you know when we all get uncomfortable? You know when we get uncomfortable? Can I say this with respect? Turn to someone and say, it's when the shoe fits. Maybe your toes are feeling squashed. Because just maybe the shoe is for you today. Come on now. That's bit... Listen, if you're tithing, you're sitting back and you're comfortable this morning. You're saying, hallelujah, pastor. I'm tithing. I'm tithing. I'm doing what's right. I'm, I'm worshiping. I'm praying. Why is it that in a moment of financial crisis globally, the church has to be silenced about financial matters? I'm tired of that. I'm no longer as a pastor going to be silenced from delivering the truth. We're quick to say, you know what, you want deliverance from a demon, come here, we'll scorp the devil out of you without a problem. But in your financial crisis, the pastor must not speak about money because I guess all he's in for it is the money. I'm not in for your money. I don't want your money. I want you to experience God's blessing. I want you to experience God's freedom. I want your marriage blessed. I want your family blessed. I want your business blessed. I want your bank blessed. I want you blessed. Because that's the Father's heart. Why do we have to tap, dance, and tiptoe around matters when Jesus spoke more about money than he spoke about healing? Because I'm going to read you a scripture just now. Oh, my word. It's going to shake you. It's going to shake me. Are you ready for a shaking? We're going to get this right. Mm. (laughs) Luke chapter 19 and verse 17 says, Well done, my good servant, his master replied. Because you have been trustworthy in a very small matter, take charge of 10 cities. Can you imagine? I'm going to transition you out of handling a a, a few little minor matters. And you're going to get given authority and get promoted to being in charge of 10 cities. We all want the bigger and the better and the best, but we don't understand the sacrificial commitment and obedience to be able to move into that. It's a call for you and I to look at everything we do, and I want to say it matters. So this morning, I knew I was going to bring two people to church with me, as I usually do. They're part of the family now. I'm not prepared for them to climb into a dirty car, because everything about me speaks about me. Everything about you speaks about you. So I said, Father, how am I going to clean my car in the rain? So Father was faithful. He pressed the pause button. I saw the rain stop. I'm out there. And I'm cleaning my vehicle. I'm gonna, I, there's no cover, but I'm cleaning my vehicle on the inside. I'm going to make it smell good. I'm going to make sure it looks good. Not my image, not my image at stake, but it's his image at stake. When I realize that whatever I do, I am an exact representation of my father, that I am his ambassador, I am the child of the king, then the child of the king, for goodness sake, must sound like the king, look like the king, smell like the king, and walk in the steps of the king. So you know what, I value those two people so much, they will not climb into a dirty car. They will not. Because they matter to me. Sometimes not easy. 
because you've got to make the time. Amen? Luke chapter 16 and verse 10 says, Whoever can be trusted with very little can also be trusted with much. And whoever is dishonest, woo, dishonest with very little will also be dishonest with much. Let me tell you, anybody who comes to me and says, it's just a little white lie. Listen, I can't trust you with anything. A little white lie tells me that I cannot trust you in bigger things at all. Because if you can lie over something small, you will lie over something big. Because it's the sinful nature inside of you that you are choosing to please instead of the Spirit of God that's saying, speak the truth. Come on. Everything matters. So ladies, you will tell your husband the truth. Don't, oh, I don't want to hurt him. He's tough for goodness sake. He can take it, but just speak it in love. Husbands, do not believe the lie. There are some things you tell your wife and other things you don't. That's why your, your marriage is not blessed, because you've got things in secrecy and you're not telling her everything. She has no idea why you are suffering. She has no idea why you look so flustered. See, she thinks it's because of the food she made. In the meantime, you are flustered because of what's happening at work. But you don't want to make her insecure. You believe the lie. You pretend. Let me tell you, your lady, your wife is tougher than what you think. Tell her the truth. She can manage truth. Oh, things are getting uncomfortable online right now. I can imagine people online saying, oh, my word, I'm so happy I'm not in there. I'm going to press pause. I'll come back to this later. <laughs> Help us, Jesus. When I make a cup of coffee, I'm going to make the best cup of coffee because it could be the last cup of coffee I serve. Whoever's at my door, oh, it's my mother-in-law again. Uh, let's put some salt in it. Coy some pepper in it. Where's the, where, where's the, some chili? Let's go a little piece of chili pepper. You sow a chili pip, you will reap a chili pip. Luke chapter 16 and verse 11 says, So if you have not been trustworthy in handling worldly wealth, who will trust you with true riches? Why can't I get the financial breakthrough that I believe God speaks over my life? Is maybe we are not trustworthy with the little wealth we have because we look at the little and we say, you know what, it's, it doesn't really matter. I guess I will only put that in play when I have much. You will never put much into play until you learn to put the little into play. Let me tell you, the Christians should be the biggest tippers in the world. We should be the most generous tippers. That when the Christians walk into a coffee shop, the waiters all have to fight to serve you. It's like, no, 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 he's mine, he's mine. Because when they encounter us, they encounter our, the graciousness of God. Oh, but you don't, you don't know their attitude. Oh, listen, I know their attitude. Sometimes I want to look at their attitude. Do you actually want this job? But don't, don't we also have that attitude towards God sometimes? And his goodness still shines through to us and loves us even when our attitude stinks. I turn to someone and say, your attitude can really stink sometimes. I can smell you a mile away. I'm coming home and I already know how you're smelling at home. And if you've not been trustworthy with someone, oh, someone else's property, who will give your property of your own? It's not fair. I don't have my own this, my own this, my own that. Well, how are you looking after someone else's property will determine whether you will own your own one day. For as you sow into someone else's property, you will reap. I'm telling you, when we leave this place at the end of this month, we're leaving the carpets behind. But I'm telling you, we're going to inherit our own place one day with new carpets, with new toilets, and a new kitchen sink. Nothing is wasted in God's kingdom when you sow it in his name. When you sow it in his glory, you will reap it in his glory. Come on. Mm. Proverbs 12 and verse 10 says, A righteous man cares for the needs of his animal, but the kindest acts of the wicked are cruel. Let me tell you, in God's economy, everything matters, even the way you treat your animals. Oh, it doesn't really matter. It's just an animal. I mean, when it dies, it just goes to the ground. Really? Let me tell you, the Bible's very clear. A righteous man, a righteous man 
cares for his animal because a righteous man understands that part of a righteous walk is that everything matters, even my animals. So I will love my animals. I will take care of my animals because the animals is part of the earth and the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. Come on now. He created it. It's part of his creation. How dare we despise God's creation? Everything matters. You, we as Christians, we never throw litter out of the car. And so we're just creating employment. That's rude. It's absolutely disgusting. We've got to get our values right, church, so we can transition successfully in life. Everything matters. 2 Corinthians chapter 13 and verse 1 says, Every matter must be established by the testimony of two or three Witnesses. You don't just run ahead with one thought. I think I'm going to kill him. Well, just wait for some confirmation. And don't get confirmation from his enemies because all the enemies will say, I'm with you. Kill him. <laughs> get confirmation from godly, sound, Holy Spirit-filled believers who will not give you what you want to hear, but give you what you need to hear so that you can transition effectively. Every, every matter needs confirmation. Oh, my word. Every matter needs confirmation, which means don't try and do this by yourself. How many of us are trying to fight every matter by ourselves? We don't let our husband in. We don't let our wife in. Sometimes just let your children into the mix. They don't understand you, parents. Your parents look weird. You sound weird. You look angry. You always sound angry. But now we're going to protect our children. Stop cocooning your children. Let them make their mistakes. Let them fail. Because in their failure, they find God's grace and God's wisdom. You are not their grace. You are not their wisdom. You are their parent to allow them to fail so that God can have his way in their lives. Step out the way and let God step into their lives. Some saying, oh, my word, I'm so grateful my children are out the house right now. <laughs> Colossians chapter 3 verse 22 says, Slaves, obey your earthly masters in, every, in everything. This is not talking about slavery. It's talking about your employment. We as Christians, we clock in at the right time. We clock out at the right time. We look after our work environment. We look after the place of employment. We do not badmouth those above us. We pray for those above us. And we trust God in the midst of the injustice that he is our vindicator. I don't have to toy toy until I get my own way. But I can trust my God who vindicates and makes a way where there seems to be no way. Obey your earthly masters in everything. And do it, oh, Jesus, not only when their eye is on you to win their favor. Hello, sir, can you see what I'm doing? Just by the way, can I just remind you what I did today? Da -na 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 -na. Man. So when he's gone, what do you do? What do we do when the pastor's not around? Can I just say this? Can I, I, I love you, you're my family. But I can see people change when they're in the presence of a pastor. They speak well. Even the children look and say, what's changed to my parents? Look how, he's like, look how they're talking to the pastor. Pastor, phone me. I must tell you what happens when they get in the car, when they're driving out, how they peacock each other around, around the corner. Man, they, whoa! It's amazing what we do. I mean, I, I, I watch, <laughs> oh, Jesus, help us. I watch recordings of church services on TBN and all these channels, and you see the camera moving, and someone is in the presence of worship with their head. I, I, that I still struggle with. Listen, when you're worshiping God, let's worship Him. Come on now, let's get this right. But I know we're on a journey. I used to be the frozen chosen. You know that I was chosen, but I was just frozen until God revealed the importance of worship, and He melted me down, and I went from frozen, praise God, to the hallelujah. So I don't judge you with your hands down, but if you're feeling a little bit frozen this morning, say, Jesus, help me out of my frozen state, because I want to be free in my worship. I want to worship you the way you want me to worship you. Come on. But the camera moves across the auditorium. And as soon as the camera falls on someone and they know they're on the big screen because they can see themselves, they go, hallelujah. <laughs> and then one, one eye open. 
camera gone. Oh, it doesn't matter. Camera's gone. Doesn't matter. Let me tell you, it matters when the camera's on you, and it matters when the camera's off you. It matters when the boss is around. It matters when the boss is not around. It matters when the parents are around, and it matters when the parents are not around. It matters. Everything matters. Because we do it with sincerity of heart and reverence for the Lord. Why does everything matter to me? Because whatever I do, I'm serving the Lord. When I serve Valme as my wife, I'm serving the Lord. When I serve the children, my children, I'm serving the Lord. When I come and serve you as a church, I'm coming to serve the Lord. When I'm reaching out to a petrol attendant, I'm serving the Lord. For whatever I do, it's for him. So I better get my attitude right because otherwise I'm a bad representation of who he is. Philippians chapter 2, verse 14 to 15. Get ready for this. Hold on, some, hold on to someone and say, he's going to speak to me right now. Verse 14, do everything without complaining or arguing. Someone shout, help me, Jesus. Come on, be honest, be honest. Help me, Jesus. I'm going to do it right now. Help me, Jesus. Especially when no one says thank you. Oh, Jesus, help me. When no one comes back and says thank you. I don't even look. There's not even one leper that comes back to me sometimes. No one comes back to me sometimes. And I walk around complaining. Then why did you do it? Did you do it for them to say thank you? Or did you do it because you love Jesus as a Christian? Do everything. Oh, my. Da, 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 da. <laughs> I must behave. This is not a marriage counseling session. But do everything without complaining. You got the picture. Verse 13, why? Everyone say why. So that you may become blameless and pure children of God without fault in a crooked and depraved generation. We never become what we should become because we complain the whole way. We never get to the other side. Do you know sometimes we are the greatest preachers, but we become the greatest complainers because we don't practice what we preach. We, we counsel people, but we can't take our own counsel for ourselves. So we tell people, don't complain. Be grateful. Be thankful. And then one thing goes sour in our lives, and we start complaining. Pastor, what should I do? And I'm so tempted to say to them, just take your own counsel and walk in your own counsel. Because you know what you should be doing. Come on now, church. Help us so that we can become so that we can transition to where we need to be. So many people are not transitioning well because they're complaining, because they don't believe everything matters. 1 Corinthians 16 verse 14 says, Do everything in love. 1 Thessalonians 5 verse 19 to 22, Do not put out the Spirit's fire. Do not treat prophecies with contempt. Test everything. Hold on to the good and avoid every kind of evil. Everything matters, but test everything. Just because it's got a little bit of aftershave of Christianity doesn't make the person a Christian. If the devil himself dresses himself up as an angel of light to fit among the other agents of light, let me tell you, by their fruit you will know them. Don't just believe everything they say. Watch the space and watch the journey. Amen. Philippians 4 verse 6 to 7 says, Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything. Everyone shout, everything. In everything, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. Let me tell you how you overcome a complaining attitude. It's as the moment arrives, pray about, pray about it. As it arrives, pray and give God thanks. Say, Father, I, I just pray right now. I'm very angry with my wife, but thank you that I still got a wife. Come on now. Amen. Present your request to God. That's the first thing we should do before we pick up the phone and phone your mother. Hey, mother, you were so right about my husband. He's an ox of a man. He, belo he belongs in the zoo. <laughs> what shall I do? Let me tell you what your mother will do. She'll say, kill him. Ox tail for supper. <laughs> no, you phone God first. You phone God first. Make your request known to God first. Come on now. 
And the peace of God that transcends all understanding will guard your heart and your mind in Christ Jesus. Why do we never transition from chaos, from stress, from anxiety, from depression? Why do we never transition from that to the peace of mind that surpasses all understanding? It's because we don't transition well. Because in everything we complain, instead of in everything we should be praying and giving God thanks. What's my next scripture there? I pressed my button or I shouldn't have. Ah, there we go. I did say, I've got to share this quickly with you before we close. Are you ready with this one? <laughs> Ecclesiastes 10 verse 19. I'm going to end here. And I'm going to deal with the rest of my subject next Sunday. Is that okay? Because there's so much in everything matters. And we've got to get this right. Everything matters. So does it matter for us to be here next Sunday? Let me tell you, you can be. Turn to someone and say, you can make it happen. You can make it happen. Come on. Can, can, I, can I, would you give me the freedom just to be straight and not judge me? Is that all right? Don't judge me online right now. But we never negotiate with our boss. I don't feel like coming to work today. Can you imagine? Try that tomorrow. Phone me. Let me know what happens. <laughs> try that. Children, try. When your parents says, go to bed, try. No. I don't want to go to bed. Tell me what it feels like after that. Tell me what it feels like. Why is it that God gets the negotiations? Why is it that he gets the crumbs? Why is it that he is so low down our to-do list that he doesn't really matter? He only matters when our marriage is falling apart. He only matters when we are in crisis. He only matters when we only get told we've got one day to live on this planet. The reality is you may only have one day to live on your planet because you have no idea when it's time to go home. So let me tell you, every moment matters. Come on now. Well, I'm tired. I don't have fuel. Let me tell you. How are you going to get to work? It takes fuel to get to work. So why don't you make fuel to get to church and leave with a full tank and believe in the supernatural enablement of God that will fill up your tanks spiritually and supernaturally? Why are we not seeing the miracles? Because we're not trusting God for the miracles. Why is it that the Israelites could go through the desert for 40 years and never have to change their shoes, never have to change their sandals? For whenever they opened up the fridge, the last egg that was there after their last bite, the egg was still there. And when they opened up the next day, the egg was still there. The egg's not disappearing. The fuel is not disappearing. And let me tell you, I had no idea how I was going to get to church this morning. Because I'm at a place where I don't have enough fuel. Can you imagine the headlines? Pastor can't get to church, he's got no fuel. Can someone please pick him up? I was about to do that, but I'm here. No excuse, because everything matters. Everything else can wait. I'm old school on this. When people come and visit me on a weekend, guess what? You've got two choices. You either come with me to my church, or you wait at home. I'll leave the key under the carpet. Make yourself up a cup of coffee, but I'm going to church first. Don't get uncomfortable. Remember what I said earlier on about that shoe? Come on, now, don't get uncomfortable. Don't fight with me. Don't leave this church. Because if you're leaving the church because you're getting uncomfortable, uh, it's because of the shoe. Don't follow the shoe. Come on now, church. You've got to get this right. We're living in the last days. Many people are going to depart from the faith. Many people are going to stop serving God. Not many people are going to love Jesus anymore. But we're not going to be part of the crowd. We're going to be part of the, of, the, of, the, of the bride of Christ that says, bring it on, Jesus. I'll keep serving you until you come. I'm waiting for you. Come, Lord Jesus, come. Mm. I'm really going to end on this verse. Don't run away. Don't leave your lounge. I'm watching you. Ecclesiastes 10 verse 19. A feast is made for laughter, and wine makes life merry. But money is the answer for everything. Don't get spiritual with me and say to me now, I don't need money, because you, you, that's lying. No, I don't need money. Oh, listen, honey, you need money for the honey. Come on now, are you with me? We need it. We don't serve it. We need it, but we don't worship it. We need it, 
but we don't love it. But we acknowledge that money does solve a lot of things. Uh, you ever got to your headmaster at school say, listen, I've prayed for your, my school fees. I can't pay you right now, but I pray it's been paid. Because I've prayed. Listen, that headmaster is saying, listen, I want the rands and cents on my desk. I need the money, honey. Amen? I mean, you can't go and fill up your grocery bag and get to the till, and the ladies go, zip, 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 zip. it's 542 cents. That's fine. God's paid for it already. See you next Sunday. <laughs> then you phone the pastor. Pastor, I prayed, but where are you? In prisons, unprisoned. <laughs> when I read that verse, I understood this suddenly. That when Jesus said you cannot serve both God and money, why didn't he say you can't serve both God and food? Why didn't he use any other substitute? Why did he have to bring money into the equation and lift money to the same level as a God and then say you can't serve both because you'll either love one or hate the other? Is because, let me tell you, food doesn't solve everything. Money solves everything. From an earthly perspective is money serves everything and it will help you through. We, from a heaven's perspective, says the love of money is the root. I won't serve it, though I acknowledge I need it. You know what the biggest challenge right now around the world? Who are we serving? Who are we serving? I can't wait for next Sunday to carry on with everything matters because our eyes are going to get bigger and bigger and bigger and we're going to realize the importance of this. And I'm going to tell you, it will change your lifestyle. It will change your to-do list. It will change the way you say things and do things because you will suddenly realize, my word, there's something a bit bigger to this. Man reaps what a man sows. Let's pray together. Father, I thank you for your word this morning. I know my word. <laughs> I shared things, Lord, I never had, I knew it was going to come out of my mouth. But it's because you care for us and you love us so much. Truth matters. At a time where truth is being watered down, people are roaming around for their itchy ears to be scratched, finding comfortable church experiences, looking for comfortable marriage experiences, looking for comfortable business experiences, suddenly realizing that we've, we live in a fallen world, we live in a corrupt world, we live in a broken society, but there is a way to transition if we can just learn that everything matters. So, Father, already you have, you've got our mind, <laughs> you've got our attention, <laughs> And we, 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 we want to know more about this. So next Sunday, Lord, show us how to go about it in a practical way where we can walk around saying, everything matters. And forgive us, Lord, for the times we have said, ah, nothing matters. From today, our attitude changes because we're here to glorify you. So we thank you for your word in Jesus' name. And everyone says, amen. amen. To all those online Meet with us again next Sunday, same time, same place. God bless you.